Hello, good evening. How are you? Hello, teacher. Hello, Rina. Hello, Maximo. Thank you for being here. So uh, today we're going to have the last class. Hopefully you have finished everything. Espero que hayan terminado todo ahí el, en la plataforma, que no hayan tenido problemas. Así que hoy vamos a terminar la clase. Solo déjenme ver. Okay, so today we are going to finish the class with section five. Vamos a terminar la clase con la sección cinco, ¿verdad? So, um, we are going to check everything that we've studied today. So, we were talking about unreal situations. What would you do? Uh, situaciones uh, hipotéticas, ¿verdad? And then uh, the conditional, right? That's what we studied, the zero condition, uh, the zero, the, the first conditional we check it just like that and we study it deeply the second conditional. So this is what we studied yesterday. The second conditional, right? The if clause and the independent clause. We checked this uh, list, this uh, conversation and we did some exercises. And this is the like the formula to create a conditional. The if clause, la uh, oración dependiente y la otra la oración independiente, ¿ok? And also we use past models, right? Like my, could, would. Y also we want we check uh, opposite, right? Accept, refuse, admit, deny, agree, disagree, borrow, lend, enjoy, dislike, find, lose, marry, divorce, save, spend. Forget, remember, and we check that also. We have more opposites, right? Like decorate, destroy, smash, inflate, short, tall, smile, cry, low, high, slow, fast, ask, answer, go, stop, discover, cover up, inside, outside, narrow, broad, sorrow, happiness, fire, water, explore, live, always, never, just and now, Day and night and love and hate. All also bottom top, right, left, peace, war, and awake and sleep, right? So that's another way that we can learn a vocabulary. Y vimos algunos ejemplos, ¿verdad? Algunas uh, problemas or predicaments that some people were having, right? And we were talking about past models, right? What should I have done? What would you have done, right? You should have told them about it you shouldn't have hidden it i would have called him i wouldn't have sent him a text so these are past models son los past models que usamos para dar sugerencias verdad deberías de haber hecho esto deberías no deberías de haber hecho esto yo hubiera hecho esto yo hubiera llamado o no lo hubiera llamado etc and this is like the the in resumen uh, this is like the the structure, right? Should plus I plus verb, like I think. What should I do? Or should 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 I do this? Should I do that? Y para dar advice, I think you should do this, right? I don't think you should do this, right? Or I think you shouldn't. Eso no se usa, right? We don't use shouldn't with I think. Should I buy the red shirt or the blue shirt, right? I think you should buy the red one, right? Or I think you should buy the red shirt. So we're going to practice this. Vamos a practicar todo lo que eh, tenemos hoy. This is just a review. Like uh, we can use should, have, plus past participle. Tenemos que saber los past participles también. Y el would have plus past participle to give opinions and suggestions and all of that, right? For example, you should, you should have studied more for the test. I wouldn't have eaten so much candy. Um, and these are some advices, right? Some advice. I found a lot of money, but I didn't take it to the police. Instead, I bought many things with the money. Right? What should I have done? 
you shouldn't have used that money. So here we have the formula again. Aquí tenemos la formula. Subject plus should have plus past participle plus complement. Another predicament. I saw somebody stealing something from the supermarket, but I didn't tell anybody. What should I have done? You should have informed the security guard. And the last one, my mother told me a secret and I told my father. Now my mother is mad at me. What should I have done? You shouldn't have told your father the secret. So that would be uh, some suggestions that we can give to this kind of predicament. So that's what we are going to do right now. And this is um, like requesting the same thing, right? But in, in this case, um, it will be, what would you have done? ¿Qué habrías hecho tú? What should I have done? ¿Qué debería de haber hecho yo, verdad? Y what would you have done? ¿Qué habrías hecho tú? For example, I said a bad word in class and the teacher asked me to leave the class. What would you have done, right? Y tenemos aquí la respuesta, right? Subject plus would have plus past participle plus complement. I wouldn't have said bad words in class. So, si seguimos esta estructura, podemos hacer, usar los past models correctamente. I went to bed late last night because I went to a party. The next day, I woke up late and arrived late at work. What would you have done? I would have gone to bed early. And the last one, la última. I didn't close the door last week and someone entered our house and stole our TV and some money. What would you have done? I wouldn't have left the door open. So those are some suggestions, right? And we did this yesterday. Esto lo hicimos ayer. And also listen to people to talk about predicaments also. So asking for advice, let's see. Hi, good evening, Jose Moises. Let's see, and also Rosemary, good evening. Now, we are going to do this. Uh, this is asking for advice. This is vocabulary, right? Asking for advice. I have no idea what to do. No tengo idea que, que hacer, ¿verdad? What do you think I should do? ¿Qué crees que debería de hacer? What would you recommend? What do you suggest? Have you got any ideas? What would you do if you were me? ¿Qué harías si fueras yo? Do you think I should? Will it be a good idea to? How would you react in my position? What would be the best solution? O podemos usar las que normalmente, ¿verdad? Las que anteriormente estábamos, anteriormente estábamos viendo. We can check, we can say this, right? What would you have done? Or what should I have done, right? That's okay. Esas dos están bien. What would you have done? What you should have done? And giving advice para dar uh, un consejo. So to give some advice, uh, you can say, you could always, my advice will be to, one thing you could do is, have you thought about, it's generally a good idea to, if I were you, I would, might be a good solution, it will be probably be better to, I think your only option is to, and the sooner you do this, the better, for example. So this is for you to practice, right? We are going to practice this today. Vamos a practicar eso hoy. But first, we are going to listen. Primero vamos a escuchar. So this is a video about uh, predicaments or weird, uncomfortable uh, situations, okay? So let me open it here. And you are going to listen to different situations and you will tell me what would you have done in that situation, okay? But first we're going to listen. If you cannot listen, please let me know. Let me see here. Yes. In the United States and Canada, as in most countries, people like to invite guests to their homes, but sometimes misunderstandings occur and embarrassing things happen. 
everyone seems to have a story about a difficult situation involving a guest. We're going to look at some of those stories today, then ask people what they would do in these sticky situations. Let's take a look. I was invited to a party, and I arrived an hour early. I thought it would take me longer to get there. Well, Rebecca came to the door wearing sweatpants and an old t-shirt. Hi. Oh, hi. Rebecca, um, oh, am I too early? You're the first one. I'm the first yeah. one. I could hear the shower running in the background, and of course, not a single guest was there. Wow. Well, we asked some people about what they would have done in this situation. What would I have done? I would have pretended to have an errand to run in the neighborhood, like going to the drugstore, the grocery store, and then I would have told her I'd come back later. <laughs> if I were him, I would have apologized and then offered to help with things like setting the table. You wouldn't have left? No, I don't think so. And what if the situation were reversed? What would you have done if you were the host and a guest arrived early? Mm, if I were the host, same thing, really. I would have invited him in and put him to work. What would you have done? Now let's take a look at another predicament. I invited my boss and her husband to dinner the other night. We had a great time, but she just wouldn't leave. By midnight, my husband and I were so exhausted. Finally, my husband fell asleep at the table. My boss was very embarrassed when she realized it was so late. I just never know what to do when a guest won't go home. So, what should the host have done? Let's get some opinions. I don't care if she is my boss. I think I would have reminded her how late it was. I wouldn't have done anything. Except pretend I wasn't tired. After all, she's your boss. I'm not sure, but I think I might have lied and told her I had to wake up early in the morning. Then I would have thought of some reason. What would you have done? Let's take a look at one last situation. My new neighbor invited me over for lunch. I was a good guest. I came on time. I left on time. I even brought a loaf of bread. It's a good thing, too, because I couldn't eat anything else. You see, the host served seafood, and I hate seafood. I'm not allergic to it, but I really can't stand it. I probably hurt her feelings, but what should I have done? What should the guest have done? Let's see what the people we talked with had to say. I think I would have lied and told the host that I was allergic to seafood. I think you should eat whatever the host makes, even if you don't like it. I mean. Someone goes to all the trouble to cook you something, it's rude not to eat it. You know, I had a similar experience once. I served a dish with tomatoes in it to someone who was allergic to them. He broke out in a rash. It was terrible. Now when I invite people to dinner, I tell them what I'm planning to make sure that they can eat it. The host in that situation should have asked her guests about food allergies and food preferences before she planned the menu. What would you have done? We've heard a number of practical solutions to some difficult guest situations. Now you should be ready for anything. Okay, perfect. So did you understand the video? What was the video about? Did you understand it? What happened in the video? They described three situations, three uncomfortable, uncomfortable situations mm -hmm. with with some guests guests at home, mm -hmm. and they uh, try to. What will you do? Well, in that situation, they talk about why they will do if the what would they have done if they were on that on that situation? Exactly, they explained it. They presented like three different uncomfortable situations, right? Like uh, situations that are kind of awkward. Uh, very good, thank you, Rina. And what was the first situation about? What was the first situation? Do you remember?
What was the first situation? Do you know? What was it about? Or do you want me to play it again? ¿Quieren que lo ponga otra vez? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. Yes, okay, I will play it again and then I will ask you, okay? Let's see. And now we're, I'm, I'm going to turn on the, the subtitles so you can read. Okay, let's see. In the United States and Canada, as in most countries, people like to invite guests to their homes, but sometimes misunderstandings occur and embarrassing things happen. Everyone seems to have a story about a difficult situation involving a guest. We're going to look at some of those stories today, then ask people what they would do in these sticky situations. Let's take a look. I was invited to a party, and I arrived an hour early. I thought it would take me longer to get there. Well, Rebecca came to the door wearing sweatpants and an old t-shirt. Hi. Oh, hi. Rebecca, um... Am I too early? You're the first one. I'm the first yeah. one. I could hear the shower running in the background, and of course, not a single guest was there. Wow. Well, we asked some people about what they would have done in this situation. What would I have done? I would have pretended to have an errand to run in the neighborhood, like going to the drugstore, the grocery store, and then I would have told her I'd come back later. <laughs> if I were him, I would have apologized and then offered to help with things like setting the table. You wouldn't have left? No, I don't think so. And what if the situation were reversed? What would you have done if you were the host and a guest arrived early? Mm, if I were the host, same thing really. I would have invited him in and put him to work. What would you have done? Okay, what was the first situation about? What happened to the guy who arrived to his friend's house? The man arrived earlier. Uh -huh. Arrived <clears throat> early to a party, right? It was the first one. Yes. Exactly. And Maximo, what would you have done in that situation? Let's say that somebody invites you and you arrive the first ride. What would you have done? I I help with the tareas. Ah, you will help with the shorts, with the house shorts and to the preparations for the party. Sure. Okay, very good. Yes, right. Exactly, yes. I feel like that's an easy one because if you arrive early, you can help. Very good, exactly. That was the situation about alguien que llegaba temprano a una fiesta. Now, we are going to check the second one. Vamos a ver la, la segunda again. Now let's take a look at another predicament. I invited my boss and her husband to dinner the other night. We had a great time, but she just wouldn't leave. By midnight, my husband and I were so exhausted. Finally, my husband fell asleep at the table. My boss was very embarrassed when she realized it was so late. I just never know what to do when a guest won't go home. So, what should the host have done? Let's get some opinions. I don't care if she is my boss. I think I would have reminded her how late it was. I wouldn't have done anything, except pretend I wasn't tired. After all, she's your boss. I'm not sure, but I think I might have lied and told her I had to wake up early in the morning. Then I would have thought of some reason. What would you have done? Okay, what well, was the second situation about? What was it about? ¿De qué se trató la segunda? I pulled him by the boss. Mm-hmm. And what was the problem? The husband has asleep. Uh, the husband was asleep. Yes, the husband was asleep, right? And it was really late. And the boss didn't want to go out, right? He didn't want to leave. 
What would you have done, Maximo, in that situation? I say I wake up earlier. You will say, oh, me tengo, me tengo que levantar temprano, fíjese, sí, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to wake up early. Okay, so you, you would have lied. A little bit, a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. okay, very good, perfect, perfect. So we are going to watch the third situation, la, la última. Let's see. Let's take a look at one last situation. My new neighbor invited me over for lunch. I was a good guest. I came on time, I left on time. I even brought a loaf of bread. It's a good thing too, because I couldn't eat anything else. You see, the host served seafood, and I hate seafood. I'm not allergic to it, but I really can't stand it. I probably hurt her feelings, but what should I have done? What should the guest have done? Let's see what the people we talked with had to say. I think I would have lied and told the host that I was allergic to seafood. I think you should eat whatever the host makes, even if you don't like it. I mean, if someone goes to all the trouble to cook you something, it's rude not to eat it. You know, I had a similar experience once. I served a dish with tomatoes in it to someone who was allergic to them. He broke out in a rash. It was terrible. Now when I invite people to dinner, I tell them what I'm planning to make sure that they can eat it. The host in that situation should have asked her guest about food allergies and food preferences before she planned the menu. What would you have done? Okay, and what was the third situation about? ¿De qué se trató la, la, esta última situación? What was the third situation about? About uh, a lady that was invited to a neighbor's house to eat lunch or something and but it was seafood and the lady doesn't like that kind of food exactly she she couldn't stand that kind of food do you do you like every kind of food Rena, or there's any food that you don't like that you can't stand well yeah i, I don't like some kind of food like relleno de pacaya and and you know Mollejas de pollo and visceras, that kind of food I, I don't like. And I was in a situation like that. A friend of my job invited to lunch to her house. So I went and they cooked, uh, they have cooked mollejas. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like it. So I, I was so shame, but, but I, I tell her I don't like that. So she gave me another thing. I don't remember what, but she she changed. She got other kind of food, but I cannot eat it then. Oh, okay. So you, you told her, I, I, I don't like that kind of food yes. and it, it was okay. Yes, I, I told because really, really my stomach mm -hmm. uh, is, it, it's strange, you know, if I try to force to eat, something that I don't like, mm -hmm. probably I'm going to throw and it will be more embarrassed, embarrassed uh -huh. to throw in front of my friends <laughs> yes. say, no, I don't like. Yes, exactly. It's, Actually, my it's my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I understand you. Yes, it would be worse, right, for you for your health, for your, because you don't know what will happen with your stomach, exactly. And it, sometimes it's, it's better to to be honest, right? And say, I'm sorry, I don't like it. Uh, if you want, I, I can eat something else, right? But uh, yeah, that's that's the best the best option, I guess. Very good, very good. Rina, uh, probably- How do you so say molleja, teacher? Molleja, pero oh, de pollo. Say, see? Or visceras. The or visceras. Let me see here because that's that's molleja. Molleja. I don't know. Molleja is like la molleja. Uh, molleja la las gizzards. Gizzards. Gizzard. Gizzard is molleja. Oh. And Gizzard. visceras is like 
it's almost the same like like visceral as like something like that okay yeah i'm looking for it but gizzards es molleja de pollo oh, okay Okay. Yeah, viscera, exactly, viscera. Very good, Rina. Very good, viscera. Perfect. So that's what we are going to do uh, today. Eso es lo que vamos a hacer hoy. Tratar de dar consejos para un predicamento, una situación. With, uh, sure, right? You should have done this. You should have done that, right? Um, Etc. We are going to see more examples. Vamos a ver más ejemplos, okay? Let's see here. So I think that I explained this already, the regular verbs, the pronunciation, and also the pronunciation for uh, the past participles, right? Or past of the regular verbs. Uh, I think that I already explained this to you, right? Esto creo que ya se los expliqué, ¿verdad? The pronunciation for, the three pronunciation, asked, cashed, uh, rained, explained, and the third, the, the last one is counted, right? Needed. So I will share this information with you. Esto se los voy a compartir hoy. And um, we have more problems here. This is like giving advice, right? So we have different situations here and we are going to give some advice. Let's see, right? For example, the first one, we are not going to read all of them. No vamos a leer todos. Solo vamos a leer algunos, ¿verdad? So just to check if you can give some advice. For example, the first one says, I am a 16 years old student. Next summer, I want to go on holiday with my friends, but my parents think I am irresponsible. What should I do? What advice will you give to this person, to this 16 year old student? ¿Qué consejo le darían a esta persona? What would be the best advice? Like he wants to go to holiday with, with his friends, right? Quiere ir de vacaciones con los amigos. But their parents, uh, his parents, they think that he's irresponsible. Creen, los papás creen que es irresponsable. ¿Qué debería de hacer? He should show to his parents that he's a responsible, responsible person trying to do homework and trying to make the the works that the the parents say tell to him to do show show them that he's a responsible person exactly uh, you need to show right you need to uh, provide examples like real examples right uh that you are someone who is responsible exactly and then you can ask right very good we have another one it says some years ago i and my wife bought a house now we are having a baby and our house is too small but we haven't any money to buy another one what should i do What would be the best option for this person? They should give the baby an adoption. <laughs> they should give the baby an adoption. But imagine <laughs> imagine that they want to give the baby because that's another one option, right? But if they want to keep the baby. Oh. What will they do? I don't know, teacher. Sorry. <laughs> okay, very good. Let's see. Uh Rosemary. What would you do in that situation, Rosemary? Are you there, Rosemary? Rosemary Ismar? What would you do in that situation? Like you're you want to have a family, but your house is too small and you don't have any money to buy a new house.
what would you do? What would be like a good advice for them? Uh, you don't know. Uh, ah, situation, but, eh, la situación es que la situación es que ellos van a tener un bebé, ¿verdad? Pero la casa es muy pequeña, ¿verdad? Para ellos. ¿Qué haría usted? No tienen dinero para otra casa, solo esa, pero ¿qué haría usted en ese caso? Uh... Uh, um, I don't try to make room. Sorry, you you won't. Um, no sé tratar de hacer algún espacio porque es difícil la situación. Yes, probably you should you should wait, right? Probably you should uh like build a little space for the baby. And then in the meantime, save money, right? Ahorrar para mientras y hacer un pequeño espacio, right? Very good. Very good. That's a very good option, Rosemary. Thank you. Okay. And uh, we have the last one. Vamos a leer la última, right? It says, I am Nick. I love a girl, but she loves my best friend. I can't stand to see them together, but I don't want to lose my best friend. What would you advise me? Did you understand the situation? ¿Entendieron la situación? Yes. Yes, right. What is the situation, Rina? Uh, Nick is in love or, uh, of a woman, of a girl that is in love with his best friend. So he cannot do anything because... Uh, he will be a bad friend if he if he tries to to separate them or if he says says to his friend his best friend hey I'm, I'm in love with your with your girl that's that will be a big a really big problem i think uh, maybe they can get into a fight or, or something exactly 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 so he is in love with a girl, right? And but the girl loves his best friend, right? Está enamorado de la amiga, pero la amiga ama al mejor amigo, verdad? Entonces no lo quiere a él. What would you do? Let's see, uh, Jose Moisés. What would you do in that situation? Mm, well, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, I think I will. I will be honest, maybe, and I try to talk uh, first with my friend, first with my friend, uh -huh. and, and I try to explain it, <laughs> but I, I don't know how, uh, what, what will, what will, what is his reaction about this problem? <laughs> Yes, because if if he tells you if he tells you, but but she doesn't like you. She likes me, right? What would mm -hmm. you do? What would you do? You will say, okay, you can stay together, or uh, would you be angry with your friend? No, no. I think I I don't be will be angry with my friend, but. Uh... I don't know. I don't know what what will I do because. Uh -huh. And if the girl say that he's in love with the friend too, what will happen? <laughs> yes, more diff <laughs> a difficult situation. Yes, exactly. And that will happen. Yeah, so. that that happens in in reality, right? Exactly, a difficult situation, but that that's reality. We have a lot of situations like um, that are kind of difficult. But sometimes we need to accept the truth, right? We need to accept that. Probably uh, she will go with someone else. Very good. Very good. So we have a lot of situations here, as you can see. But we are going to listen to uh, listening, right? 
a listening practice. And it's very uh, similar. It's muy similar a lo que estamos hablando de estos problemas, ¿verdad? So what we're going to do is listen to this podcast. And we're going to listen to problems, Ronnie and Becca, right? And we're going to check the problem and what this person did. Vamos a ver cuáles son los problemas de estas personas en este podcast. I think I have it here already. Let me see here. Yes, it's here. Okay, let's listen, please. Exercise 10. Listening. Problem solved. Part A. Listen to an advice podcast. Complete the chart. Good morning and welcome to Problem Solved, a podcast where we find great solutions to your problems. Life is full of predicaments, but there's always a solution. I'm Cole Williams, and today we have Dr. Jones with us. Thanks for being here, Dr. Jones. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Now, let's get started with our first message. It reads, Dear Problem Solved, I'm a senior in high school and am starting to apply to college. My dad really wants me to study law. He's a lawyer and loves it, but I love languages and want to be a language teacher. We got in a huge fight about it. I got really mad and told him he was selfish. Then I slammed the door. Now we're not talking. What should I do? Thanks. Ronnie. Dr. Jones, what advice would you give to Ronnie? Well, Ronnie, I understand your frustration. You know what you want to do, and you feel you don't have your father's support. But you shouldn't have told him he was selfish, and you definitely shouldn't have slammed the door. He's thinking about your future and wants what's best for you. You need to apologize and tell him that you appreciate his opinion, but that studying languages is your passion. If I were you, I would have said that from the start. But don't worry. Your dad will understand and eventually let you decide your career. Be patient with him. Patience is always excellent advice. Let's go to the next letter from a listener in New York. Her message reads, Dear Problem Solved, I have a problem at work. I've been at my company for five years and have always arrived on time and even worked overtime to get the job done right. My boss often congratulates me on my work, and I was sure I would get a promotion or raise soon. But I never said anything to him about wanting those things. Then, last week, my boss welcomed a new employee. The company created a new position, and this new guy is taking it. They gave him his own office, and I know he's making more money. Why didn't they ask me? Now I feel unmotivated and unhappy at work. What should I do? Becca. Becca, thanks for writing in. While there are plenty of things you should do now, let's first look at what you should have done before this new employee arrived. You said your boss always appreciated your work, but maybe you should have been more honest with him about wanting to grow in the company. I would have talked to him and expressed that a long time ago. It's possible he thought that you weren't interested. But don't worry, there are plenty of things you can do now. Why don't you talk to your new co-worker, find out about his education and work history? Look at him as a colleague and someone you can learn from, not as competition. He might suggest a course you could take or have some good advice. And then talk to your boss, but be positive. Let him know how much you like working there and how much you'd like to grow more in the company. He might have some good advice, too. And in the end, he will appreciate your honesty and ambition. I think honesty and patience are two good lessons we can learn from today's podcast. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Dr. Jones, for being here with us. And listeners, remember, life is full of predicaments, but there's always a solution. I'm Cole Williams, and thank you for joining us today. Don't miss the next episode of our podcast, Problem Solved, next week. Okay, very good. So let's see. Do you do you want me to play it again, or that's enough? Está entendieron el mensaje, o quiere que lo ponga otra vez? It's enough. Teacher. Enough. Okay, perfect. So, what was the problem with Ronnie? ¿Cuál era el problema con Ronnie? 
Do you remember? That he's about to go to college and he wants to study language and the his father is a lawyer and the father wants that he study law he studies law but he doesn't like law he doesn't li like that career so he got a agreement with his father and he has slammed the door so it's a and they are not Actually, they they are not talking. Exactly, they they had a fight, right? They were fighting because uh, Ronnie's father wanted to wanted him to study laws, to be a lawyer para que fuera un abogado, verdad? And Ronnie doesn't want to be a lawyer. He wants to be a teacher languages. Él quiere ser maestro de idiomas, verdad? Probably the father is a lawyer and he knows how to to guide him, right? But he Ronnie doesn't want to be a lawyer. So what was the advice? What was the, the Dr. Jones told him to do? ¿Cuál fue el consejo que le dio la doctora Jones para el problema de Ronnie? What was the best advice? Uh -huh. He should take it easy and talk to his father and the doctor said that it he shouldn't slam the door. Uh, definitely, he shouldn't slam the door, and but he he should talk to his father and explain the situation that the he wants to be a teacher. Exactly, that he needs to explain the situation, uh, like calm down, right, relax, and then explain to him that his situation law or that his father's opinion is important, but that he he shouldn't be like like scream at him or slam the door or anything like that, like calm down, right? That's the first thing. Very good. And probably later, uh, the father will understand that. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Rina. And Becca, what was the problem with Becca? Who knows? ¿Quién sabe cuál fue el problema con Becca? Someone? Or no problem with Becca? I, I remember the problem with Rebecca is about her job. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I, rem I don't remember good, but I, I think uh, uh, a new, uh, how we say, compañero? A co worker? A new co worker uh, uh, arrived. Uh, uh, at the enterprise and and, and uh, he he was the new and the boss uh, gave gave him the uh, a uh, a best a best place on I, I don't know how to say it, a best work mm -hmm. and and give and give and gave him more money mm -hmm. and for this reason Rebecca uh, Felt uh, decepcionada. Uh -huh, disappointed. Uh -huh. Disappointed. Uh, Rebecca felt disappointed because uh, the the new co -work worker is it is uh, promovido. Promoted. Say? Yes, promoted. The new co -work worker uh, was promoted and. And and she and she felt that he he was she was uh, excuse me she was uh, that that the boss uh, uh, maybe think that she she can she can uh, was promoted uh, to this to this place exactly that was the problem that 
uh, like you say in Spanish, le comieron el mandado, ¿verdad? A Rebeca, Beca. Because uh, she was working really hard. She was part of the company, everything. And then a new co-worker arrived and they gave him the promotion, right? El nuevo le, le quitó el nuevo empleo a Beca que había estado en la compañía y lo pusieron a él y le dieron más dinero y ella se quedó ahí siempre en el mismo puesto, ¿verdad? Very good. And what was the advice that Dr. Jones gave her? ¿Cuál fue el consejo que tenía que hacer ella? ¿Qué tenía que hacer en esa situación? What was the best advice? Like to look for another job, to quit, to learn from the experience, from the coworker, to talk to the boss and tell that she wanted to be like promoted, wanted to be promoted. What was the best solution? ¿Cuál fue la solución para Beca? That she needs to talk to his boss, right? To her boss, sorry, to her boss. And she needed to express that she wanted to be promoted and that uh, she needs to learn and know more about this new coworker and know more about the job. And probably she can take more classes or extra courses so she can get a promotion, right? Porque ella no dijo que ella quería la promoción, por eso tal vez no la tomaron en cuenta. Very good. Perfect. So what we're going to do right now is something similar. Vamos a hacer así como en programa de radio, ¿verdad? Like a radio station, like a radio program. Como cartas a María, pero en la radio, ¿verdad? So one of you will be the person with the problem. Like I have a problem, I don't find a job, or I, I don't like to live in my house anymore, or I want to travel. What can I do? Entonces van a tener un problema y le van a decir a esa persona qué es lo que le puede solucionar con ese problema. Y a la otra persona va a ser como la doctora Jones, ¿verdad? Va a ser doctora Rina, doctor Máximo, doctor Sonia, ¿ok? And they will provide um, a solution. Van a dar una solución, ¿verdad? For example, I want to get a new job. Ok, so you need to look for a new job. You need to uh, probably go to classes, ir a clases, right? Or, I don't know, study something or prepare something, right? In your house or in your or look for another job in different enterprises. Ahí ustedes pueden dar una solución cualquiera, como les dio la doctora Jones, a Ronnie o a Becca. Así vamos a hacer la conversación. Les voy a dar nada más 10 minutos porque es una conversación bien pequeña solo para practicar. But try to include everything, right? Traten de incluir las, las palabras que vimos ayer, eh, los opuestos, ¿verdad? Y estas frases, ¿verdad? Uh, like, uh, you should have done this, you should have done that, right? You should, you wouldn't have done this, you shouldn't, you wouldn't have, like, stayed alone. Traten de utilizar los past models, que eso es lo que vamos a utilizar para dar suggestions. Solo le voy a dar 10 uh, minutos porque ya sería, ya estamos acabando la clase o hasta menos para que ustedes puedan, vamos a ver si podemos practicar la conversación. Entonces, la, no, si quieren no escriban la conversación, solo platíquenla así como este, qué van a hacer, qué van a decir. Y este sería the last role play, el último role play que vamos a hacer para este, para este módulo, ¿verdad? Para terminar, digámoslo así. Entonces, déjenme ver. Vamos a tener tres, una con uh, Rina y Josemite, otro con José, Moisés y Máximo, y otro con Rosemary y Sonia, ¿ok? So, you can join right now. Van a tener cinco minutos para crear la conversación y luego regresamos a practicar. Una conversación pequeña, ¿verdad? Okay, you have uh, five minutes, people. Five minutes.
Hello. Yes, hello. I don't know what's going to happen. Or I don't know if it's in a group right now. Okay. Can you go to the to the room? Mar yes. I yes. get I think it's with Moisés. You cannot go to the room, Josemith? No puede ir al, 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 al room? Yes, yes. I, I think it's with myself, I think. Okay. Or no? No, it's with uh, Máximo, pero lo voy a poner Máximo con Rina. Uh, pueden quedarse aquí, entonces. Okay, thanks. Okay. Hagan la conversación, pueden quedarse aquí I, si quieren. I, I, I don't know how. Uh, José Moisés. I think his there? microphone is, is off or I don't know if he's available. So. Yes, José Moisés, are you there? Yes, yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, you can, you can uh, create a conversation. You have around five minutes, cinco minutos. Y... Ahí nada más, uno va a ser el de la radio, el que va a dar el consejo, y el otro es el que va a pedir el consejo, ¿ok? Only okay. that. Perfect. Ok. I have a big problem. Can you help me? Yes. Yes, of course. At Y ahí vamos agregando, por ejemplo, la palabra de él, que si, 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 ¿Cómo? 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 Que como mi problema es que, que en mi trabajo no me han mejorado, sería en con my salary. Entonces sería así, my problem is that, my problem is that in, that my salary has not been Ah, porque yo la tenía. My problem is that in my job they have not improved my salary. Este um, Creo, verdad que para decir estuve ahí es como I'm, porque me acuerdo si estaba el Science, I'm. Pero estuve ahí, I was there, I was there, estuve aquí. ¿Ay, cómo? I was there. I was. Ajá, I was there, estuve allí. porque para decir que he estado ahí que he estado ahí durante I have been I was durante during, during I was there during estuve allí durante por ejemplo o he estado ahí mucho tiempo 
cafeteria. I was there for a long time. I was there for a long time. Estuve ahí durante mucho tiempo. Usted diga su pregunta. Vaya. Ajá. Lo que me estaba diciendo, o sea, que probablemente, probably. Eh, Pero usted si quiere diga que, el problema. Yo le voy a recomendar. Por eso, vaya, ese, por eso, ese sería mi problema. Hasta ahí, porque ya no tengo mucho tiempo. Vaya, ahora sería usted. Yo le diría, Sonia, usted podría haber hablado, podría haber hablado con su jefe. Hablado con su jefe. Y él, sí, y él podría haber tomado en cuenta el esfuerzo de su trabajo. Mm -hmm. In the house. Uh -huh. Maybe this is a good option for on, uh, on for your kids uh, uh, to to keep to keep them uh, busy and they they can help you to do uh, uh, little little works at home. And the other big big problem is I live far far away from my job, and the traffic is so terrible. I don't know what can I do too because I have to work for it. So uh, I have to bring money to uh, buy the, some food for my kids and for my family. But the traffic is so terrible and driving me crazy too. What can I do? Yeah, okay. This is a big problem because the traffic in, in El Salvador is very difficult. Uh, maybe you can organize your time to to wait earlier and, and no, uh, uh, look for somebody help you at home and keep your keep your your child when you are when you are at work but it's not it's not the solution but <laughs> <laughs> I think I I, I did I, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I wanna click. So my 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 kids have to to go to homeless. <laughs> uh, in the, in the, the, second, the second chance that you have is is if is, is find another world uh, near oh, that's your, your home. Yeah, that's a good a good idea. <laughs> I it's like not... the, the, the three things that you, you told me. <laughs> Actually I, I I going to put up my uh, practice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you put your kids to, to do works at home. Yes. Now they have to clean it up. If they don't do, it's not food for them. Sorry for them. <laughs> and sugar, don't don't give him give them. No, no sugar. more sugar for them. No candies, no no cookies, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, Just salty. It, at night is is worse. No soda. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Is worse. If you gave gave them some candies, soda. Cookies. I think everybody's here. <laughs> yes, everybody came back. So we are going to listen to the conversations, the last role plays. Let's see who wants to begin. Quien quiere empezar con los role plays, con las conversaciones que hicieron. Who wants to begin? Quien quiere comenzar con la conversación para ver qué hicieron, aunque sea cortita. Me, teacher. Okay, Maximo and Rina, right? Uh, Rina, yes. Okay, go ahead. Rina said me about um, about her dream. Uh huh. And she would like to travel mm -hmm. to Punta Cana. Mm -hmm. 
but she don't don't have money mm -hmm. much money mm -hmm. i recommend recommend it recommend her mm -hmm. a stay money next month or try to get another job mm -hmm. only okay very good so she wants to travel to punta cana and you recommend the, the recommendation you recommended her to get another job right or try to get more money okay to earn more much more money yeah like an extra extra job for extra income mm -hmm. yeah probably very good advice perfect let's see Josemith. what was uh the conversation about the one that you had with uh, let's see jose moises he gave me uh, some advice about mm -hmm. my kids i told them that um i had three kids and one is like a troublemaker mm -hmm. and he told me uh i don't i don't have to give him some sugar at night uh, because he is like uh, worse. Mm -hmm. So uh, he gave me like uh, driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. And the other one is like I said, uh, I have, a, I live, I live um, far away from my job. Mm -hmm. And he said the the best advice is I have to uh, organize organize my time mm -hmm. or with that job and find a, another close. Yes, closer. it is true. Yes, you need to find something cl closer. You need to be like yes. He gave me some good advice. And the other one is like uh, if anybody help me uh, to clean it up at home. So no more food for them, for them. Okay, very good. Very good advice. Very good. Very good. Let's see the last one. Um, the last one will be Sonia, right? And oh. Rosemary. Yes, what was the conversation about? Your conversation. Okay. Rosemary. My problem is that in my job, they haven't improved my salary, mm -hmm. and I was before a long time. Sonia, you call hey, tell him to your boss, and he call hey, taking your work effort into account, so you will be upset about your salary. <laughs> okay very good so you need to talk to him about your salary to increase your salary okay very good very good perfect so i think that we have finished section five hopefully you have practiced your english you have learned a little bit of it eh, espero que le den su diploma también y nice to meet you everyone okay mucho gusto en conocerlos a todos y no sé si lo vamos a seguir viendo pero eh, si no pues espero que sigan aprendiendo inglés okay have a nice evening and see you soon, okay? Thank you and nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Have a and nice evening. And hope you see you next level. Okay, <laughs> very good. Have a nice night. Have a nice Thank you so much, night. teacher. Good night. Thank you, Thank you good teacher. Night. Bye. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.